Everybody's got a different story. Everybody wanna give themselves away, but I'm still afraid. If we can stay out of their field of vision, if we can keep ourselves a half a world away. At the turn of the 20th century, rapid industrialization and urbanization led to a social upheaval, defined by goals for a civilization free of violence, disease, and mental ailments. However, the means by which this utopian society would be attempted would include some of the most profound ethical violations in the history of the United States. Here in America, on March 9, 1907, the Indiana State Senate in a vote of 28 to 16, made history by being the first jurisdiction in the world to force the sterilization of citizens it deemed unfit. Unfit to exist, unfit to reproduce. Connecticut was soon to follow. By the time Laughlin of the ERO had published his suggestion on how to implement legislation for forced human sterilization, 12 states had already put into place sterilization laws of their own. By 1924, 3,000 socially inadequate people had been sterilized. No one said that we were victims, honey. No one said we had to keep the things we get. And there ain't no regrets. And all our friends, they moved to Hollywood. But we ain't that desperate yet. No, oh no. Um, what we wanted to be able to share, I think, is Colleen's experience as a parent and as a parent with a disability and uh, some of uh, the struggles she's had in um, being able to keep her child and uh, what the child welfare system has uh, sort of been like and how it's been involved in her life. So, is that okay? Is that yeah. a good start for you? Yeah, that's good. Okay, yeah. so you want to tell yeah. me a bit about how you lost your daughter and how you got her back? Um, Back in uh, December 13, 2001, my daughter was taken away from me. Um, there was, I was in a, at, the, at that, that particular day, I had just come out of a domestic dispute with my ex, um, relationship kind of thing. And uh, yeah, she was taken and uh, she was eight and a half years old. She was gone for four and a half years and I didn't, couldn't understand why they were taking her away from me. I was a very devoted parent. I had made sure that she got into all the necessary programs for school and... Yeah, so you, it was a surprise to you when that happened. So I'm just going to explain a little bit about why we wanted to include this story um, as part of an understanding about um, uh, the way in which systemic and pervasive um, <coughs> oppression can occur. Um, you know that I think it's easy to maybe easier to understand Wendy and Sam's experience and in light of what we understand about um, uh, oppression and eugenics and uh, it's somewhat harder to recognize I think some people like Colleen in her situation where she's um, actually um, been oppressed because she's chosen to be a parent. We no longer are concerned about sterilizing uh, people with disabilities so much. In fact, most of uh, today's public opinion would be that it would be wrong to sterilize. However, there um, is still a lot of uh, oppression and uh, stigmatization and devaluation around being a parent and being able to uh, get the support you need to be a, a parent that can uh, uh, have a good life with their children. Um, I think that underlying belief of that devaluation is particularly clear if you get tied up in the child welfare system. I think over and over Colleen was told she shouldn't be a parent, uh, she should just um, give up her child, uh, that the experience in the foster care system was, you know, I'm sure um, much more damaging uh, for Ashley than uh, her life at home had been at, at that point or ever after. Um, but it continued to be the professional view that um, Colleen could never prove herself as a good parent, she, no matter what she did. Yeah, the, her, their exact, the court's exact words is, 
you'll never, how could a person with a disability take care of a person with a disability? And I'm going, because I can, I understand what she's going through. And you happen to love her. I love that girl. Yeah. I'm very proud of her, who she is today. So we just think that's an important piece to the picture. So thank you. Thank you both. Now, a Scottish teenager who's due to give birth in January has been told her baby is likely to be taken away soon after it's born. 17-year-old Kerry Robertson, who has learning difficulties, has already been prevented from getting married because the authorities believe that she lacks the mental capacity to consent to the ceremony. Now, in a moment, we'll be talking to Mark Goldring of MenCap. First, though, let's hear from Kerry herself and her boyfriend, Mark McDougall. As soon as... We found out that Kerry was pregnant. We obviously decided we wanted to, wanted to do it all properly, get married first, and basically show that commitment to each other. Mark was like, I, they're going to take the burden away from us. And I was, like, upset. What Five Council have done is they've continually discriminated against Kerry just simply because of her uh, learning difficulties and it seems to be the only issue that they want to talk about. They don't want to look into the fact that Kerry's a loving, kind person who is going to be a great mum. Oh, don't worry about it. It's a lot of pressure, I know. But... Tragic. Incapable. 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 Vulnerable. Vulnerable. Helpless. Poor. You. Vulnerable. Incapable. Victim. I define me. Proud to be disabled. You're not alone. Together we stand. I'll be by your side. You know I'll take your hand. When it gets cold and it feels like the end. There's no place to go, you know I won't give in No, I won't give in Close and it comes to an end with you by my side. I will. 